Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is day 12, day 13 of the... Oh, this is the Friday the 13th that we warned you about. Ooh, spooky. Hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, today I watched um, Mission Impossible, the last one. It was exciting, it was fun. Uh, I don't remember anything that happened, honestly. It's one of those things, and it was just like a few hours ago, but uh, it was fun while I was there. Maybe I'm just getting old and seen now. I, I've been, I think every day I just talk about how little I remember, so... I don't know. Let's take a look at today's bomb. Uh, looks like it is a little bit further from the recent past. Uh, so that's good. Even though, I mean, we solved this before, but just to be clear, like, we solved thousands of problems on Nico. So, you know, uh, it's unlikely they're going to give us a new problem. But to me, honestly, it's always new to me because I don't remember it, so it's fine. Anyway, let's take a look at today's bomb. We're 2616. Minimize the maximum differences difference of pairs. All right. You're given zero index nums, p, p pairs of indexes of nums such that maximum difference is minimized. Also, ensure that no index appears more than once amongst the p pairs. Okay. I mean, I guess that's fair, but that's a little bit awkward. p pairs. Hmm. No depth for a pair of index. The difference. Okay, absolute difference. Return the minimum maximum difference. Okay. Uh, honestly, when I see something like minimum, maximum, or something like that, I'm always thinking about um, binary search, right? Um, the reason is because binary search just, and I don't know that this is the case, but in general, my feel, it's way suited for uh, optimization problems. Sometimes it's ternary search if you into that and other type of searches. A binary search uh, will let you go. And the, reason, the way that I think about binary search, especially if you're searching for the answer, though, is that I ask myself, can I do it with a linear search? If I could do it in a linear search um, in a way such that, you know, when you do a linear search, it cuts off and then you could return early, that usually is a sign of a binary search uh, in some way. I mean, not all the time, obviously, you know, there are a lot of tricky, tricky, tricky problems. But yeah, okay, so... Hmm. Huh. But the question is, okay, um, hmm. It is definitely very awkward, this problem. Uh, I don't know that I can, I mean, maybe it's still binary search, but but how would you construct it, right? Because ideally you can, you have a binary search target and then now you, you evaluate due to that target in at most linear time, or maybe n log n if you want to get to n log square n or something like that. But uh, let's say, I mm. uh, I guess my idea would be that is there a way to use greedy based on that, right? Um, and maybe there is. Be and maybe that is binary search, right? Um, because basically the idea is that if you do a binary search, you go, you know, three. Um, I guess for one, you always just first you sort the array. I mean, you don't always have to sort it away, but I, but whenever the elements don't matter, uh, in, in or the order of the elements don't matter, I always sort the away it almost at least in my mind as a possibility because n log n is very unlikely to time you out, um, and you know unless you you have like an additional constraint that makes it in linear time, it's a very cheap operation to do. So the first thing I might do is just sort right. Put it down before I forget. And then now, if I have a target number of okay, can can um, can we make p pairs where this is possible? Well, now that you sort it, then it just becomes a greedy sliding window solution, right? Because in a way, is I'm trying to f think right now whether I'm lying or am I uh, doing the best I, as I can to say the truth. Um, the reason is because let's. Is, uh, actually, I don't know that that's true, uh, per, se, per se. So maybe I'm wrong on this one. Because for example, what I wanted to say was that, let's say your target is 5, you have 1 and 6, 2 and 7, 3 and 8, say, right? Um, you know, if you are sloppy with the greedy, it is possible to have one, match 1 with the 3, um, two, if this, I guess in this case you still kind of worked out, but maybe just by luck. Um, 
like for example if you do mm, maybe not maybe, maybe I'm wrong maybe you do always want this I mean, mm, maybe that greedy is right. It's just so hard. Greedy is still very hard for me, as you can see. I'm still trying to think. Like, you have someone like this, then I guess you match this. Um, but what if you don't? Would, would there ever be... I guess my my, my thing with them is... Uh, okay, I mean, so the way that... Or one way that you could prove greedy is by using the exchange principle. But sometimes, like, uh, I, I do... Uh, for me, at least for contests, uh, maybe not in an interview, but for contests, uh, enough for me to YOLO, I do play with an idea of calling, um, not, not the exchange uh, argument, but the exchange idea, right? And, and that, it's a very easy idea of like, okay, let's say we have to make a decision on three. And the, the thing with greedy and dynamic programming, all these problems is all about decisions, right? And decision is that, okay, we have a three, which one do we choose? Um, and if we choose a suboptimal one, or not even a, that's a wrong word. If you choose one that is not what your algorithm does, would that lead to a worse answer, right? Meaning here, we have, let's say target is five, we have a couple of choices, right? We could match the three of the six, and then now you have the rest of seven, eight, nine, ten, right? And maybe you could do some proof based on that. But what if we match three and a seven? Well, and then you have now oh, six, eight, nine, ten, um, which you can even already make the argument that, okay, well, 6, 8, 9, 10, um, that's already kind of more suboptimal than this, right? In the sense that, um, <clears throat> I don't know if that's actually true, but only in the sense that, um, I mean, let's say, I mean, this is a 6, so it's a little bit more awkward, but let's say this is now a 4, and now we're 4, right? The thing is that now, uh, maybe even um, another 3, just for purpose, right? Uh, let's say we match the 3 of the 3, then you have this thing, and now you match 3 of the 7, well, now the 3 and the 8 cannot match, oh, whoops, I forgot to if the target is 4, but that, sorry that I keep on changing the variables, but that's how I think about it in my head, because I'm always trying to figure out how to make a counter example to my thing, because um, all you need is one counter example to be like, oh, okay, this greedy doesn't work, um, and, but here, like, you can say, okay, if we match the 3 and the 7, then, um, Then yeah, and the three eight cannot match. This will lead to a, um, uh, I mean, even if you match the eight with the nine or whatever, it will lead to a worse suboptimal match, right? So that makes sense to me. Is it enough for me to YOLO? Maybe in a contest it is, but I'm trying to be a little bit better about it because the idea. So then, what what are you doing with the target, right? Won't you just look at adjacent elements? Well, the answer is no because you still might, you know, because for example, if you have like three and, um, I don't know, let's just say a hundred, and then this is like 107, whatever, right? Then in this case, um, it may be that you don't want to match three of the hundred, but you still want to match with a hundred to 107, right? Because now this gives you the delta of 97, which may be too high for a certain target. Okay, I don't know, honestly, at this point, I cannot tell you if this is true. Um, but here we can, um, you know, maybe I'll YOLO a little bit, uh, and and the right thing to do, especially during a contest, maybe that I, if I'm YOLOing, I write more tests to kind of test my uh, inputs. That said, I may be a little bit lazy today, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. But here, we return uh, get number of pairs, right, maybe, for a given target, right? And then now we have for, um, let's just say, n is equal to length of nums. And keeping in mind that nums is already sorted, right? Uh, and honestly, at this point, I do not know for sure that this is the right answer. Just to be clear. Like, I'm not... <laughs> so, if I'm on the wrong path, my apologies. But sometimes, uh, these problems are very tricky. Especially since it feels like it is going to be greedy in either case. Just because it, it's it, N is too big, right? It's going to be N log N. So, there's no brute force. It's either that it's going to be greedy. Well, it's probably going to be greedy. It's either that uh, greedy in a in a binary search way, or is it greedy on an observation that I had not make, right? Um, because it's just linear or n log n, uh, and, I, and this isn't really a data structure problem, but I want to feel it out, like I don't see how it could be. 
Um, I mean, it could be. It's just that I couldn't see it. But anyway, here we go. Um, and this is a weird, awkward. So then now we have pairs is equal to zero. How many pairs can we make, right? So then if num sub i and num sub i minus one or oh, plus one, sorry. Um, uh, with this difference is less than or equal to target, then pairs we increment and then we increment two because they match off, right? Otherwise we increment by one. And then we just return pairs, right? And then now your binary search um yeah you already sorted so then the the maximum delta is just gonna be the, the first number and the last number so then you have left bound is zero right bound is um uh num sub uh the, la the biggest number minus the smallest number right is the delta and then now you have wow well, left is equal to right or less than you right so uh, i i feel like i should do a binary search weirdo at least because I wrote one in the past, but I didn't like how it turned out, so I didn't never released it. But maybe I should just do one that explains my code, um, because I write it mostly the same way every time. But and you don't have to, but I think it's more intuitive for me, which is that we have uh, bounds are inclusive. Because when bounds are inclusive, then you have left right right. When bounds are inclusive, that means that when this bound is equal to one element, then that's your answer, right? And and that's it. And then you know that left is inside, right is inside, right? And then that's pretty much the reason why I, I prefer it that way usually. And now if uh, get number pairs of the mid, if this number is bigger than, uh, or yeah, if this, we, we can, th this means that um, p mid is true, meaning that mid is good meaning that mid is a possible answer. So then now we want to try a smaller answer, right? So we want to try a smaller answer. So then we want we lower the upper bound or the right bound uh, to mid. And this is inclusive, so that's why we said right to mid. Uh, else, that means that mid is not possible. So we want to set left is equal to mid plus one. Why plus one? Well, because well mid is not a possible answer. So because it's wrong. So then we do a plus one to get it outside. And that's how you do the left. And that's basically it, um, if this is right. I mean, who knows if this is right. Uh, I forgot to start. Huh. I usually write in a folder, but obviously. But. All right, looks good for these two answers, but honestly, that does not convince me of anything. These two are kind of crappy examples, right? Um, yeah. So I'm going to YOLO submit, but I would plead that if you're not as lazy as this, then uh, definitely write more tests. Okay. Oh, and this is 1900 day streak on Friday the 13th. But yeah, um, okay. I mean, I guess that, I mean, I didn't, eh. the tricky part is the proof part, which I did a very hand wavy part about it. I think if you were re more rigorous about it, um, and I think there is a principle, uh, exchange principle in there. Um, I, I didn't really go over exchange principle that much in this video. Uh, or argument sometimes. Um, the idea is that if you exchange it for any other way of doing it, any other ordering, it gives you the uh, a worse answer. And so this has to be optimal by like a uh, contradiction or something like that, depending on the way that you took. But I'm not going to spend that much time on this video because it, honestly, I'm not that good at it. Uh, greedy problems are uh, the things that I'm struggling with the, the most. Uh, and keeping in mind that even with greedy problems, People just take, you could say that is a greedy problem, but uh, for when problems get harder, there's just so many ways to get greedy so that you still could be greedy in the wrong way, right? Maybe this one's a little bit more okay, but uh, yeah. I think the principles is that very tricky. How did I do last time? I guess the last time I did okay. Um, I guess I did the same thing basically uh, huh, with this thing. Oh, wow, I both basically the same. I mean, I, I did this thing uh, to terminate a little bit earlier a little bit more performance why is that performance time so much slower uh, i guess i did it the same thing here well mm, i mean i wrote it kind of the same way but i did just a day before oh i guess i optimized this one a little bit but i don't know Anyway, uh, yeah, so what's the complexity? My, my apologies, I forgot to finish the complexity first. I mean, this function is O of n. Hopefully that's obvious. It's just a linear scan. And here 
we have log of d or r maybe i don't know either d or r uh, r being the range of the numbers right on and you can maybe even say the number of bits if it's the number of bits then it is going to be over b where b is the number of bits or log b with b is the range of the number of bits which in this case 10 to the 9 is going to be 30 right because log of 10 to the 9 or maybe another way of saying is 10 to the 9 requires 30 um bits to represent so uh, so this is going to be over uh b for number of bits times n uh, or you could say o of n log b where b is the range or something depending on how, how you define b and that's it that's all i have for this one let me know what you think binary research are tricky so let me know if you have questions uh yeah calling a night uh not yet because i have to do some exercises but that's it thanks for watching stay good stay healthy to your mental health i'll see y'all later and take care bye bye